Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Tom Sider from On The Hot Podcast. Today, I have some bonus content for you guys. The bonus content I will be covering today will be in the world of the NBA for basketball. If you guys haven't checked out, episode 74 is now available on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. That episode was a solo episode, just your host only in that episode. I discussed my letter grade for the Dallas Cowboys uh, for the first half of the NFL season. I broke down my two point of pretenders of uh, contenders or pretenders in the AFC conference. And I discussed my winners and losers at the NFL trade deadline that took place last t- this uh, past Tuesday. So go ahead and check out episode 74 if you guys haven't yet already. But the bonus content I ha- will have for you guys today will be I will be sharing my opinion on the Brooklyn Nets deciding to fire Steve Nash. So earlier in the week, uh, Tuesday, the Brooklyn Nets decided to uh, part ways with Steve Nash. It was a mutual agreement with uh, between Steve Nash and the Brooklyn Nets organization. Both parties decided to part ways, and therefore Steve Nash was fired by the organization. But in my opinion, I think it was a bad decision by the Brooklyn Nets to fire Steve Nash. Listen, Steve Nash is one of the greatest point guards of all time. You're talking about somebody who has one of the greatest basketball IQs at any position in NBA history. This guy knows the game of basketball better than 90%, 95% of people that's living on planet Earth. You're talking about one of the greatest point guards of all time that you have the opportunity to let him coach guys like Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden. I'm going to get to those guys in a few moments, but this was a bad decision on the Brooklyn Nets part for parting ways with Steve Nash. And in my opinion, Steve Nash was just getting going as an NBA head coach, but he was a pretty good head coach with the Brooklyn Nets uh, under the circumstances that he was going through as an NBA coach. He went, he had his record, he had with the Brooklyn Nets, he had 92 wins, 62 losses to his resume and helped the Brooklyn Nets to two playoff appearances, uh, being the NBA head coach of this franchise. They had a second round exit in the 2021 playoffs, unfortunately. Uh, game seven against uh, the champions that were the champ, new champions that were crowned that year and the Milwaukee Bucks. Arguably, they could have won that series. That series could have gone either way. I think that still would have went to game seven. But you're talking about that series that James Harden was hurt. Kyrie Irving was hurt. If those two guys were healthy, the Brooklyn Nets might have went to the NBA Finals that year and won the NBA title. And maybe when we, wouldn't, we wouldn't even be having this discussion at this moment. But Deserves a lot of credit for going to, uh, going to battle toe to toe with the Milwaukee Bucks in the second round in the 2021 playoffs and uh, the second round. And obviously last year, due to the fact that he didn't have uh, in the beginning of the second half of the NBA season, Kevin Durant was hurt. Kyrie Irving was unable to play in all the games in the second half, only playing majority of away games due to his vaccination status. Somehow, somewhere, the Brooklyn Nets still got into the playoffs, still had to go through the play-in tournament, won that play-in tournament game against the Cleveland Cavaliers, still found themselves in the NBA playoffs as the seventh seed, unfortunately got swept to the reigning defending Eastern Conference champions in the Boston Celtics, uh, being swept in the first round last year. But Steve Nash was not the problem in Brooklyn with the Brooklyn Nets. All the superstars were the problem. And in reality, Steve Nash was there to coach. We were seeing this thing unfold in front of our eyes that this was more of a reality show uh, rather than being competing for championships, competing competing to be the best team in the NBA. That's what we've seen transpire with the Brooklyn Nets. And all the superstars that were there, they were just never good to be with each other from the get-go. All have leadership problems, all have leadership issues. Let's start with James Harden. He, He blamed, for his short time, and this is the same James Harden that was there for a year, only a year. Uh, found his way out of the out of the Houston Rock, found his way out of the Houston Rockets organization. Wanted to play with Kevin Durant again. Found his way playing with the Brooklyn Nets once again. A year later, things started breaking down. Uh, he blamed the, on the coaching of Steve Nash, and a little bit of the blame goes to Kyrie Irving not being able to play in every single game, only playing in away games which led to James Harden wanting to be, uh, find his way out of Brooklyn being traded to the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. But James Harden deserves a lot of blame because if you're going to be a leader, you're one of the best superstars of all time. You're supposed to be a leader out there helping Kevin Durant, helping these Brooklyn Nets players achieve greatness out there despite the circumstances, despite what's going on with your third best player, your third best play, uh, option in Kyrie Irving, despite if you have a problem with the coach or not. 
James Harden was a problem, and we have seen he has not been a true leader since his days, uh, his, his since his MVP days with the Houston Rockets, and found himself out of the Houston, uh, found his way out of the Houston Rockets, failed to win a championship there due to the fact that him and Chris Paul could not coexist. That is the reason why that relationship fell through. So James Harden never been a true leader himself when it matters most. Found his way blaming Steve Nash, and then meanwhile we have Kevin Durant, who. Our, the other day, when he was asked by reporters how he felt about Steve Nash being um, fired from the Brooklyn Nets, the organization uh, parting ways with him, he didn't even seem phased. He said, I woke up from the nap and heard the news. Well, you would think a, a uh, franchise player, one of the greatest to ever play, another uh, player, one of the greatest to ever play of all time, you would think the front office uh, lets him know about the news that's about to transpire. Hey, Kevin, we just want to let you know that we're letting uh, go of Steve Nash. We're parting ways with him. He is no longer your head coach here in Brooklyn. Well, that wasn't the case. He got an alert on his phone from ESPN, most likely. Maybe Bleacher Report that Steve Nash was no longer the head coach in Brooklyn. Didn't seem phased about that and, and had the audacity to say that this happens on a daily basis in the NBA. Kevin Durant, you got to do better than that. You and Kyrie Irving... We're the ones who suggested to have Steve Nash as your head coach in Brooklyn. Kevin Durant is another guy that folds when it matters most when it comes to becoming uh, a, top, a number one leader with the franchise. We know that he was a leader with the Golden State Warriors, but we all know that that was Steph Curry's team, Klay Thompson's team, and Draymond Green's team. Still to this day, it's still their team, but he was not the number one leader with the Golden State Warriors. Has yet to prove he could be the number one uh, leader with another NBA team where you're talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder. Didn't prove that he could be a number one leader. They went to the finals in 2012, but that team was the all the leadership was between shared between Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. Failed to get them to the NBA Finals, turned their back on them, went to the Golden State Warriors. Now we're seeing that Kevin Durant wants out. We've seen that he requested a trade during the summer. The Brooklyn Nets were obviously not having it and not letting him go. So now we're seeing leadership problems transpire here in Brooklyn once again. And then you talk about the number one problem that has been the, the, the thorn in the Brooklyn Nets organization since 2019. Uh, and Kyrie Irving. He's became the first NBA player, first athlete, first millionaire to be a part-time uh, player, part-time worker. Uh, he has a lot of PTO, personal time off in his resume with the Brooklyn Nets. Has yet to show that he could be a true leader with this franchise. His time with the Brooklyn Nets so far, he has played 111 games, missed 128 games, now finds himself on a five-game suspension for talking bad about the Jewish religion, talking bad about Jewish people. And Nike has suspended their relationship with Kyrie Irving, effective as last night. So Kyrie Irving has definitely not been a leader since he came to the Brooklyn Nets. He finds himself in principal office trouble. Uh, he could find himself out of the league in a matter of moments, matter of days. Next next instant like this, he's going to be the next Antonio Brown. He's going to be the, the Antonio Brown of the NBA find himself kicked out of the league for unnecessary reasons but he has been unreliable as a leader since being LeBron James' sidekick and back in the day in the 2015, 2016, 2017 days with the Cleveland Cavaliers and you talk about his leadership after he requested a trade after uh, leaving the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. You're talking about with the Boston Celtics. Remember that Brooke, that Boston Celtics team when Kyrie Irving got there, you know, the team that was driven by Isaiah Thomas, who was a underdog that season with the Boston Celtics, with, had a chance to win MVP that year. They moved off him a year later to get Kyrie Irving, and Kyrie Irving was surrounded by nothing but talent. But he was a veteran player who's been to the big dance, won an NBA Finals, uh, knows what it's like to get things done. And you had him lined up with a young Jason Tatum, a young uh, Jalen Brown, a young Marcus Smart, a veteran player in Al Horford. The same crew that's still in Boston with the Boston Celtics today. Kyrie Irving failed to bring the best out of them, uh, bailed on them when it mattered most, told the franchise that follow before that following free agency that 2019 summer, told the Boston Celtics crowd that he would be staying with the Boston Celtics. What did he do six months later? Found himself on a new, signed a new max contract with the Brooklyn Nets. And that was all history. So Kyrie Irving has proved that he is he's not the leader that he should have been from the get-go. Not the leader that he was uh, 
that he once was with with the Cleveland Cavaliers now finds himself in a sticky situation and has put the Brooklyn Nets in a lot of hard, rocky situations since being with the franchise. And let's talk about the icing on the cake here. It is not Steve Nash's fault that they decided to move off of James Harden. And what do you get for James Harden? You get a big, the biggest mistake that has happened so far with the Brooklyn Nets since they have under, uh, undergone, uh, underwent in this new direction. Uh, trading for Ben Simmons. Why would you trade for Ben Simmons, someone who is not committed to the game, someone who is uh, regressing as we speak on a daily basis, somebody that is not willing to put 110% in on the court for you. This is a guy that when the Boston Celtics were up 3-0 to zero in the first round last year in the NBA uh, playoffs, they asked Ben Simmons, hey, can you just play 5 or 10 minutes just to give us a spark, something that we could get at least uh, be gentlemen swept by the Boston Celtics. Ben Simmons is warming up. He's in uh, warm-up gear. Two days later, he apparently pulls a back uh, back muscle and cannot play. So Ben Simmons is not, he, it's just, Steve Nash was doomed from the get-go with all this. It was more like a reality series more than being a competitive franchise, competing to win championships out there in Brooklyn. And unfortunately, Steve Nash was the bad guy that got let go. I just don't think he was the problem with the Brooklyn uh, Nets. But the old saying, out with the new, out with the old, in with the new. Now, uh, he, uh, a few days after this uh, Brooklyn Nets fired Steve Nash, actually the same day that they fired Steve Nash, we were hearing reports that Eam Okuda be, could be becoming the next uh, Brooklyn Nets head coach. Now, it's kind of a sticky situation right now because he's still a part of the Boston Celtics is suspended for an entire year from the franchise due to the fact that he had uh, sexual allegations with somebody in the organization. I don't think he should be suspended for a whole year. He's actually not suspended by the league. He's just suspended by the franchise of the Boston Celtics. I think they could have went in a different direction by this, but uh, then not suspending him for a year. At the end of the day, it is what it is, and this decision is final because this happened uh, a few months ago before the season started. But I think it would just be a mistake for the Boston Celtics to let Okuda go um, and leave the franchise, even though he is on a year suspension. It just seems like they don't really care if he's a part of the franchise or not at this point. They're willing to just let him go to the Brooklyn Nets, not get any trade compensation off of this, even a, a late second round pick. No money involved in the deal. They're just going to let him go, cut ties with him, and he and Ian Makuda can sign with the Brooklyn Nets whenever he wants, it seems like. And they're really interested in bringing him in. And I think it'd just be a mistake for the Celtics because he did do things that this franchise was lacking at the head coach position since having Doc Rivers years ago. And he did everything with the Boston Celtics that Brad Stevens could not do with this franchise. He brought the best out of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, who is the reigning defending defensive player of the year, Al Horford, uh, Roy Williams, this team is so talented and out there in Boston. He brought the best out of them last year, and that's the reason why they found themselves just two games shy of winning an NBA championship. In his first year with the Boston Celtics, he brought them all the way to the NBA Finals, fell two games short to the Golden State Warriors of winning a championship last year, and he's a great head coach. Any franchise in the NBA would be lucky to have this guy. He learned a lot under the coaching tree of Greg Popovich in his early coaching days as an assistant head coach with the San Antonio Spurs. And this would be a great fit for the Brooklyn Nets to bring in Okuda. I don't think he would stand up for any BS in that Brooklyn Nets locker room. I think he would bring the best out of that Brooklyn Nets team. I think he'd bring the best out of Kevin Durant. We see the best out of Kevin Durant on a nightly basis. I think he could take his game to another level. Kyrie Irving, he wouldn't stand for the BS. If Kyrie Irving's not all in, he would tell the front office, cut this man immediately. Not even waiting for trade offers. He would be done with Kyrie Irving. Same with Ben Simmons. He, would, he wouldn't cut it with Ben Simmons BS. He would tell the franchise, we're not waiting for trade compensation. We're just going to, I want this guy out. He wouldn't stand for it. I think he would bring the best out of Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and Ben Simmons, and that depth that the Brooklyn Nets currently have on that roster. I think this would be a great fit. I think Ima Kuda could be the next best thing and be the best thing that the Brooklyn Nets have had in quite some time. They would be poised for at least an Eastern Conference Finals appearance if he's the next head coach for the Brooklyn uh, Nets. 
But that's how I feel in this situation. And that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is your host, Time Sorry, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.